Now, Baskerville is another interesting font because it has very nice quotes. There's a difference between inch marks and honest curly quotes. For example, if I go ahead and enter a quote mark before and after this, you'll see I get some really nice curly quotes as opposed to just up and down inch marks. This is because After Effects has an option called Use Smart Quotes. Smart Quotes automatically enter curly quotes without you having to type a special keyboard combination. If I was to turn Smart Quotes off and use the exact same keys on the keyboard, you'll see that I just get these boring inch marks or foot marks. Curly quotes, by the way, are one of the things that help distinguish good typesetting from bad typesetting. You really want to take advantage of these curly characters where possible, because it'll just make your type look that much more professional. I'll take the quotes off for now. Press Enter. Let's go ahead and tour around some of the other options in the character panel. In addition to font size, there's many other options, such as the spacing in between the lines, how tall the characters are, how fat the characters are, baseline shift or superscripts, etc. It's very important to keep track of what characters or what lines are selected when you play with a character panel, because again, only the selected characters are going to get your alterations. If you only want to superscript one character, select just that character, then go ahead and give it a space line shift offset. In addition to clicking on the color swatches to change the color, you do have a handy eyedropper where you can go ahead and pick another color, such as down in my timeline layer bars. There's also quick access to change the color to black or to white. There's some white type. Currently, I have my stroke disabled, but there's a lot of options with strokes in After Effects. I'll bring that swatch forward, and I'll click on this to open up a color panel. Let's go ahead and pick just something like a red stroke for now. Click OK. Now, as you alter the stroke size, what's very important is how the stroke is being drawn in relation to the fill. You see here, very quickly, the stroke overwhelms the text. Well, that's controlled by this option over here. For example, the default is stroke overfill. So as you get a fat stroke, it paints over the fill color. If I change it to fill over stroke, you'll see that even as I fatten up my stroke, I can still see some of my fill. When I'm using fill over stroke, as I increase the stroke width, you can see where the stroke for one character starts to paint over the fill of an adjacent character. If you see that going on, you can change this option to all fills over all strokes. That will keep all of the fill colors clean and on top of everything, and then you can go for very fat strokes for special effects and the such. Now, another very nice feature concerning strokes is how do the stroke ends join? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the size of my type here to go ahead and see some detail on the ends of my strokes. And I'll go ahead and increase my stroke size here. There's a new option in the character panel called line join. Right now we have a miter join, which means we have a fairly sharp edge. If we pick rounding, you'll see that we get rounded off characters on our strokes. And if I choose a line join of bevel, you'll see where I get this cut off beveled edge. Nice for some special effects. You might want to keep it in miter, which is the default look. Now, another very important element of good typesetting is tracking and kerning. These two affect the space in between characters. Tracking affects the entire selection. For example, all of the characters in a word. So you can go ahead and increase it to get sort of a spaced out look, or decrease it to go ahead and pull things in very tight for a very crowded look. Kerning affects only the spacing in between character pairs. Not the whole text, but the characters on either side of where you've got the cursor place. So the first thing we'll do is set the tracking to get an overall look that we like, then use kerning to fix any problems in between characters. For example, you see that this T and this I are pretty tight to each other, to where they're touching, but none of the other characters are touching. In that case, I'll put my cursor right in between those two characters and alter the kerning for that pair. You can go ahead and scrub the value right here in the character panel. There's too much space, too little space. Somewhere around there is much better. You can also use keyboard shortcuts. If you hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and use the left and right cursor buttons, it will increase or decrease the kerning in increments of 20. We personally find that to be a little bit high. We'll go ahead and fine tune this to get exactly the look that we like. And you can go through your type and change other character spacings. For example, if you think that's a bit on the large side, 
you may go ahead and reduce it to get the C tucked in a little bit closer to the eye. Kerning is another one of those things that really sets apart a professional type job from an amateur type job. Now we've been spending all of our time in the character panel, but there's some very interesting options down in the paragraph panel as well, such as whether or not type is left justified, centered, right justified, and other automatic justifications and spacings, including indents and other really useful options on the paragraph panel. But the one thing that's very important to notice is nowhere in the character panel nor the paragraph panel do you see any little animation stopwatches. These parameters are not animatable. There's an entirely separate type animation engine in After Effects, which we'll cover in another movie. So the mindset to use is use the character and paragraph panels to get your type the way that you like it, maybe the way that the final title is supposed to look. Then use the animation engine to make it fly on screen, fly off screen, or do other interesting things. And that's a quick overview of how to set your type in After Effects.